I'm here with uh, Gita Wirawan, the chairman of the investment, Indonesian Investment Coordinating Board, who's visiting Washington, D.C. with the Indonesian delegation for the nuclear summit. Um, Gita, could you tell us a little bit about what your messages are for Americans who are thinking about Indonesia? Well, it's pretty simple, really. It's, you know, we're trying to make Indonesia more relevant to the people in the United States. So I, I think, you know, we've suffered enough from, you know, being known as a country of natural disasters. Fortunately, we've got, you know, quite a number of positivities that, you know, we ought to be known for. Uh, you know, the economy has been moving, you know, in the right direction. It's only going to continue moving in the right direction, macro, uh, economically, and political stability is there. So, you know, let's not forget it's, you know, it's going to be, what, $650 billion economy by the end of this year. And you've got a population of 235 million people third largest democracy in the world, largest Muslim nation, you've got modernity, and you've got, you know, the ability to show the right stuff uh, on, on certain things. At the same time, we've got issues that we need to, I think, fix, uh, and, and what I'm basically pitching is directionality, and, you know, it's, it's not about being able to deliver absolutes today or tomorrow, but, you know, we've gone on the right path the last five years, and there's no reason for us not to go on the right or on the same path. You're doing some exciting things with your fellow ministers. Uh, yeah. You know, before it was harder to invest in Indonesia, you had to stop at many places. You, right. I, We understand you're talking to your fellow ministers and also provincial governors. Could, could you tell us about any progress you've made in sort of streamlining the investment yeah. process? Well, no, no, if you, if you invest, uh, you know, in through the Jakarta office, you can you can do it all under one roof. You know, getting the fiscal incentives, the immigration related stuff, the labor related stuff uh, at the BKPM office. You know, as much as people think that's a victory, uh, I think the real challenge is how to roll it out to the 33 provinces or the 500, you know, over 500 kabupatens or regencies. You know, that's going to be a big challenge. So we're we're trying to roll it out to all the 33 provinces by the end of the year and to accelerate that we're you know championing or, or using certain provinces as champions uh, regional champions uh, seven provinces have been selected as uh, regional champions those are the provinces of Riau, South Sumatra, West Java, East Java, East Kalimantan, West Nusa Tenggara and Papua uh, and the governors are excited about this you know by being included in that you know list and they're cooperating uh, and this can be used as a positive contagion to all the other provinces and you know governors they talk to each other mm -hmm. and then I think the next gig is to try to get that happening at the Kabupaten or the, the Regency level which which we're already getting getting started with. A quick look around Southeast Asia would suggest that uh, democracy is not an easy <laughs> not an easy process. Uh, our friends in Thailand obviously are, are struggling right now. Indonesia has been through uh, more than a decade of yeah. sort of turning the ship around. Is, Indo is democracy been good for business or will it be? What's your what's your view on that? It depends. If you're taking a six-month view, uh, you know, we, we, we like to take a long-term view of things. Mm -hmm. And yes, the lessons were hard for, for all of us in Indonesia. You know, I've been, I've been there throughout, you know, since, you know, the beginning of democratization in Indonesia. Uh, but long shot, I think it's, it's only good uh, for, for everybody. But as long as you're mindful of, of you know, needing to do the right things, you know, on, on the fundamentals. And I think we have been able to focus on those things in the last five years. You have an infrastructure summit coming up. Uh, obviously, infrastructure must be a priority. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, well, I, I think this, this summit is going to be different from the previous on two accounts. First one is, is that it's going to have a higher degree of realism. You know, I, I don't think we would like to be as bombastic as we were in the previous two or three. Second, it's going to be more focused. You know, we're going to talk about, you know, building roads and power plants. 
And if you take a five-year view of Indonesia, I mean, it really boils down to, you know, building 20,000 kilometers of roads and 15,000 megawatts of power generation. It's simple, hmm. but it's tough also at the same time. Tough in a sense that, you know, the execution part of it. Uh, you know, for, for those two things and some of the peripheries, about $160 billion worth of funding is going to be needed uh, for which or of which the government is going to allocate 50 to 60 billion. So I think I think the million dollar question is, you know, who's going to get that 100 billion dollars worth of private capital? Hmm. And I think the government realizes that you know there needs to be a role crystallization here uh, in terms of you know marrying the private capital and the government capital, because you know as as beautiful plan you, as as you can make, you know, if the execution capacity is not there then you know, it will stay on as a plan. And we certainly do not want to, you know, go forward, you know, without, you know, the ability to execute properly. You've created companies and developed strategies for investors and you've sat on many boards. If you were sitting on the board of a of a major multinational company and talking about investing in Indonesia, what would be the three things that you'd recommend that they think about? In, in terms of sectors or opportunities, or in terms of what to consider, what to consider, uh, as, as how to a, how to approach Indonesia. Uh, Indonesia, like many other places, is a is, is a who you know model, right? It's not a what you know model, uh, as as an investment thesis. Uh, and number two, it sits on the back of you know continuing macro stability uh, in economic sense and also political sense. And number three, it's a burgeoning, you know, economy with fantastic demographic bonus. You know, that's youthful. Sixty percent of the population is younger than 39 years old, uh, and 50 percent is younger than 29 years old. Those are the, the, the key areas that you need to focus on. You know, the other stuff in terms of its wealth and natural resource and, and what have you, that's that's granted. But how do you actually make the best of it? I think it presents a, a pretty nice, you know, uh, investment thesis. I know you need to get on your plane to New York, but thank you for spending some time thank with you. the CSIS team. Happy to be here. Thank you. Thanks, Ernie. Thank you. Appreciate it.